How's it going? I hope you've been well. Today we're going to be talking about the Surefire XC1 versus the Inforce APLC. Two fairly popular weapon lights for your Glock. If you're a regular and this video looks familiar and I'm wearing the same shirt and in the same area as my last video that I think I probably just posted, it's because I just decided to, right after doing that belt video, just do this video. Surefire XC1. This has been my carry light now for almost a year. I think I posted a review of this about a year ago. If you Google Surefire XC1 review, I'm pretty sure my video is that first result. So if you're curious to that, maybe I'll link to it in a card as well. But if you're curious about my thoughts on that, that's it. At the time, it was really the best option available. Uh, some of my thoughts have changed. I've had a little more training, you know, as, as I think most shooters, your mentality, your thought process, what you're looking for should kind of change and evolve and improve over time as technology improves, as your skill set improves, as your knowledge improves. So things I said in that video, pretty much still accurate, but some of my thoughts and some of the important things I'm looking for in a light have changed a little bit, which maybe, you'll have to stay tuned, maybe makes the APLC a better option in my mind. So this isn't gonna be a full-on APLC review. I'm really gonna be comparing it a lot to the Surefire XC1 because I think, I think it deserves to be compared to. So, it's small. The reason I like it is because of its size. The reason I like the Surefire XC1 was because of its size. They both have some pros and cons, which we'll get into. But these aren't the most powerful lights. They're not the most durable lights. They're not the lights that I would put on my pistol if I was going into combat with a battle belt and everything. But where these lights do shine, where they do excel, is for concealed carry, for carrying a gun every day. I carry appendix. A lot of people are carrying an X300 Ultra or a Streamlight TLR1 uh, appendix or however they're gonna carry it, and that's great. If you can carry that and you're comfortable with that and you're gonna carry your gun every day with that light, awesome. It's a powerful light, great light con for concealed carry. Well, great light, I wouldn't say a great light for concealed carry because of its size. However, me, I care a lot about comfort. So I want a light on my gun. Uh, I think carrying a flashlight, a handheld flashlight is great. Uh, I carry an Olight S1R because I have a weapon light. If I didn't carry a weapon light, then I would carry a bigger flashlight with a tail switch activated light. So if you're not gonna go with a weapon light, I would suggest carrying a handheld that hat that you can use more tactically. The S1, I have to press this button. It's not the most tactical flashlight, but for just handy EDC application, great light. Sorry, sidetracked a little bit there. But anyways, all that to say, I want a light on my gun, but I still wanna be comfortable. So these two options add very minimal bulk to a gun, very minimal bulk to a holster. They don't extend out really past a Glock 19, which is my carry gun. So for concealed carry option, these two, if you're carrying a Glock 19-ish, two small lights. And we'll get into some, some brief specs. In my videos, I don't talk about specs that much because you can find those on the internet. You can find those on the product site. If you're watching this video, chances are you already know all those specs, but if not, Two small lights. XC1 powered by a AAA. You can use a rechargeable AAA, not, not a 144, not a 1440, I forget. But you can use a like an Eneloop rechargeable, you can use an alkaline, or you can use a lithium. I use lithiums in mine because they're a little lighter and the run time's a little longer. This is a CR2 in the APLC. That's it. CR2, so the battery is a little more proprietary, triple A's you can find anywhere, these you can't. But, do yourself a favor, if you have a light that uses them, just buy a big old bag of them. This will last you, this will last far longer than I'm even gonna have this light, because I'm not using this light every day to scan for stuff, it's not, it's not an everyday light that I'm not gonna bust out my gun with my light all the time. So buy a little bag, they're not that expensive, this will last you forever. I'll link to these down in the description below. So. Battery, yeah, I say I would probably give the win to the XC1 just because you can find those batteries everywhere. But having a CR2, it's not it's not a big deal. Just buy buy a bag of batteries and you're good to go. So from the front here, you can see the difference in the reflector. 
the, I'll get into kind of how you change the batteries and stuff like that. So size, for all intents and purposes, they're basically the same size. Weight, they're basically the same weight. Lumens, they're both 200 lumens. Runtime, they're both about 1.5 hours of runtime. The beam pattern is different. Uh, I'll show that here right now, maybe while I'm talking and I'll just splice it over. So the beam pattern, uh, they're different. The XC1, I'll talk about it, is a little more yellow. It's a little more of a flood. It doesn't really have a hot spot. I couldn't find the candela ratings really anywhere for these two lights. Uh, I think I found the candela rating for the XC1. It was like 730 candela maybe, which is pretty weak. So what that means in practicality is the XC1 is going to be pretty good for close quarters. If you're someone like Travis Haley, you're going to say it's great out to 75 yards maybe, but in all practicality, the APLC has much more reach, much more throw, a much brighter hot spot, has more candela. So you're going to be able to reach out further with the APLC. That's never going to be a bad thing. It still has pretty good flood or spill, so it's going to be still be pretty good for close quarters. Uh, and the light is a little more white. So the light is cooler on the APLC. It's a really nice color temperature. The XC1 is much warmer. I don't actually prefer the XC1 color temperature. A little more yellow, a little warmer. I give the light output uh, just, I think, an all-around winner to the APLC. So light output winner is APLC. All right, this is pretty exaggerated because I can actually see much more than is represented on camera, but you can barely see on camera. This is the XC1. I actually am getting pretty good visibility through my eyes on this down here. It's about 20 yards away, that little, those two tree stumps. Now you'll be able to see this way better with the APLC because of that hot spot. So this is the APLC, my driveway, some trees you can even see down beyond there. Uh, Really great. XC1 can almost see nothing in the camera. I can see a little bit through my eyes, can see way more than in the camera, but still the APLC destroys it. Battery compartment, real quick. This screws off. You can use a shell casing, you can use a screwdriver. I use my Leatherman Skeletal for everything. This little end part, this rounded part, basically I just use for a screwdriver all the time. My most used feature, my skeletal probably honestly is using this as a little screwdriver. So that comes off. It's nice because it has a little battery indicator thing here so you know which way to put it in. And it's just a AAA, standard AAA. These guns have all been cleared beforehand. They are all empty and unloaded. Got some fuzz on there somehow. Anyway, so that just screws back in. Bingo, bango. The Inforce is the same way. It advertises a lockout mode with a, uh, you can unscrew it a little bit. XC1, you know, if you really want to do a lockout mode, well, you can probably unscrew it. And at some point it come, it doesn't turn on anymore, but you know, your end is loose, but that's your, that's your secret lockout for the XC1. I, pro I probably wouldn't recommend it though, because you might lose your little cap. The Inforce APLC, this gun has also been cleared beforehand, don't worry about it. Screw off the top. There is no battery markings, there are no battery markings on the exterior. Though, once you open it up, this does have a little spring on the tip, so obviously that's the negative end. On the inside, I don't know if you can see, there's a little plus icon in there. That is the positive end, so the battery goes in like this. I always get a little weary changing these batteries while they're on the gun. Obviously, I triple check that the gun is clear beforehand, but still, I don't really like that the gun points at me. So I might recommend to you to not do that, to take the light off, change the battery, put it back on just for safety reasons. But yeah, that's an aside. So here, it's on. If you turn it, it says a quarter turn and it enters lockout mode. Never carry it in lockout mode, but if you're gonna to toss it in a bag or something where this switch may be activated, you can unscrew it and it goes into lockout mode so it won't turn on. Screw it back tight and back in business. So size, the APLC, you're gonna see holsters. They're gonna be retention on the front 
on the right side of the light, right here. Retention is gonna be there for probably all the holsters if they're gonna have click, pop, retention. The XC1, if they're using kind of like the more modern practices, they're gonna get retention on the trigger guard because the XC1 is just slightly slimmer and you're gonna be able to actually get retention on the trigger guard. So a lot of XC1 holsters, this was one of my earlier prototypes, so the click isn't quite as good as my current ones, but retention for me on these XC1 holsters that I make is actually on the trigger guard. So what that means is the XC1 is just barely shorter in this dimension, though almost not even noticeable. The width is about the same. They are both just about the width of a Glock frame, but just wider than a Glock slide. So controls, momentary controls on the XC1 are pretty much my favorite. They're these little plastic paddles. You push down on them for activation. What this means is when you're holding a gun, your support hand thumb is gonna go down, activate it. It falls in a beautiful location. It's really great. I love, love, love the momentaries for the XC1 firing side. Easily reach it with your finger. The biggest gripe to me with the XC1, which I kind of go back and forth to saying that's really important or that's not important, is constant on activation. So set it, forget it. You cannot do this one-handed. You cannot do this with one hand if you're right-handed or probably even if you're, if you're left-handed and you have giant hands, you could break your grip, you could get to it to hit constant. But in practical terms, you're not gonna be hitting this constant on, you're not gonna be able to constant on this one-handed. Two hands, it's not that hard. If you're right-handed, get to it with your thumb. Two hands, if you're left-handed, not gonna be very easy. You gotta kinda do a reach or reach under to get it. So the biggest downfall of this light to me personally is you can't get constant on. I, at the time of reviewing this light, constant on wasn't a big deal to me. I said, I'm gonna use momentary. I've read, watched a lot of training. I've heard some stuff. I've done some training that says momentary is the way to go. Momentary, just tap it, tap it, tap it. And I get that. And that is still the way to go if you're clearing rooms, if you're on some tactical team, special forces, operations, whatever. Momentary, good, good practice. But in real life practical terms, concealed carry, non-ideal situations, I'll have to get my gun out, maybe I'll have a kid, maybe I'll do, be doing something, maybe I'll need to like hold something open. In practical real use for me and for my environments, the more I thought about it, the more importance I put on being able to do a constant on. So the APLC is the winner hands down if you care about having constant on activation of your light. You can do it easily. One hand only, two hands, constant on is really easy to access on the APLC. One of the easiest constant on activation lights out there on the market, as well as its big brother, the APL. APL also recently got updated. I have one of those with APL Gen 3. Uh, it's 400 lumens. This isn't a review on that light. It's still, this is still, would be what my carry light is, not the APL. So, constant on, big winner to the APL. I talked a lot about it. I could have just said, hey, constant on, easy to do with the APLC. But it's, for my current training level, for my current mindset, this may change. This may change in the future because I'm kind of always constantly evolving. But for right now, constant on is pretty important for me in a light. So I'm glad this light is out. And I'll just say it right there. Uh, now that I'm talking about it, that single feature alone is what pushed me over the edge. And the APLC is currently my carry light of choice. It has dethroned the XC1. So some of you may be surprised to hear that. Some of you might not be. Uh, the Surefire still wins in some categories. I still prefer, I still prefer the momentary controls on the XC1. I like the looks of the XC1. I like that it's a tiny little bit smaller. It's a tiny little bit lighter. I like that it has AAA uh, batteries, but still, uh, it's not. In my mind, it's still not the winner because the big downfall is that you can't get constant on. All right, so now let's talk about the rest of the APL. 
C. What I don't like for the momentary is that for this, you're pushing in on the light. That means I'm gonna exaggerate this motion, but you're pushing in. What that means is you're pushing your gun to the left to do momentary. You're, and you're gonna have to overcorrect with your right. And again, I'm over exaggerating these mo motions just, just so you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. You gotta push. I'm sure if I actually want, it's not like that. I'm ha I have all the support under here and I'm just pushing down gently, effortlessly. I'm not changing anything. I'm not having to change my grip. I'm not having to force more with my right hand to maintain control. Straight down. I love it. I love, I love this activation. I can't say enough. Same with this. Straight down. With this momentary, I'm pushing over. And again, I'm exaggerating these motions, but you push over. Can I do it without moving it? Of course I can. But it takes more, it takes a conscious effort to do that. Same here, a conscious effort to not move my gun at all when I'm doing momentary. Is that a big deal for you? Maybe, maybe not. It's not a huge deal for me, but it's worth, it's worth noting. The paddles on these, I love them. Huge upgrade from the previous models. Uh, very, very grippy. The texture on these, they did a really, really great job with this little stipple texture. It's a huge upgrade from their Gen 1 and Gen 2 lights. Also, the activation, let's see if I'll put it right next to the mic. You can probably hear it. It is a positive, tactile, and audible feedback you get on the paddles. Really great, man, this video is getting long. I apologize, but hey, you probably want the detail on this review. So, paddles, even though I don't like, I do not like this as much as the down little paddles, the execution they did is as good as it can get. The, the switches feel great, the texture is great, everything about it is great. So this light, if you want momentary, you just hold it for more than, I don't know, like half a second, and you can let go. If you just tap it, it stays on. However, if you push it in and then let it out, it's momentary. So that's relatively intuitive, but at the same time, I may sometimes just wanna tap it for a momentary. I'm just like, I just wanna tap it for a momentary over here, and I can't just tap it for a split second because it'll go constant. So that's another thing to note. This, I go momentary all day, rapid fire, could strobe it, whatever. Can't do that with this. If I tap it, it's gonna stay on. Momentary, I have to hold it for a second. Again, probably not a huge deal, but just something worth noting. The thing I don't like on both of these is the screw sticks out. Sticks out here, sticks out even more on here. So this is a little mounting screw, and both of them very sharp. The XC1 is a little less so, the APLC is very sharp. What this means is your holster, even if it has channels, depending on how you put this in here, will probably kind of scratch up and catch. Here, I'll, I'll exaggerate it a little bit to see if I can get some action. So you'll see here, it scratches off the Kydex, potentially, if you're aggressive with your reholstering. <laughs> really on the reholstering. The unholstering is kind of a little more smoother motion, but the reholstering, you can get the gun in there at a weird angle or something. So that's another small, minor thing to note, sharp edge there. So while we're talking about screws, let's talk about how you mount it, uh, take it, put it on and take it off of your gun. Both of these use a little flathead screw on the left side of the light. Both of the screws sticked out, like I just mentioned. I don't really love that for either of them. I wish the screws were flush, but it is what it is. This, the APLC, I'm gonna be honest, I don't love the mount. It's gonna be pretty secure. It's not gonna fall off, but what you have to do, you have to take this little screw all the way out, completely remove it in order to then slide the light off. The Surefire XC1, though the screw is pretty similar, you know, it's the same pain in the butt to unscrew it. Use a little screwdriver or whatever, like me, use the end of your Leatherman Skeletal. But the thing is, screw still in there, light comes off. The screw is captured. You don't have to completely remove the screw, you're not gonna lose the screw, whatever. You just remove it, unscrew it enough for the light to come off, and you can put it back on. The screw is already in there, the rail, the channel will line up very easily. You'll know when it's in 
your channel, and then you screw it back in. So mounting the XC1 and taking it off is a little bit easier than the APLC. And I'll get into that now with the APLC. So the APLC has a hole on one side, that's what the little bolt goes through, nothing on the other side except for that. So this needs to slide onto the rail. The thing I don't like, and this is a nitpick, but my video is already like an hour long, so I might as well get into little nitpicks. You would think, hey, I push it, it's all the way on, it's all the way seated, I can't really see through this unless I shone a little flashlight in there and tried to get in there, but I'm just gonna assume, hey, it's lined up. The screw's not going in, it's not going in. Okay, that must mean it's on too far. So I need to back it off. I'll back it off just a little bit. Screw uh, still doesn't quite go in. Back it off a little bit more. Now the screw goes in. Now the screw finally goes in after I back it off a little bit more. Now, why couldn't they have made it to where you just press the light all the way onto the trigger guard and that lines up to where the screw goes in, nice and secure. That means you could have actually got this light millimeter, millimeter shorter, even. Uh, maybe there's a tolerance issue, maybe there's a reason that I don't know about, I'm sure there probably is, but again, super, super nitpicky, but putting this back on is a little bit difficult. I'm not gonna complain about it, I'm not gonna whine about it, but this is just a super detailed review, so that is to note. All right, guys, that's it. I think that's all you really care about. Uh, again, stats, specs, whatever, I'll put links to these. If you purchase these through my links, awesome. I'll link to them on Amazon, I'll link to them on Optics Planet, whatever's cheaper, whatever's in stock, cool, go for it. Uh, I really appreciate you using my links on my videos. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. If you have any feedback, uh, let me know. If you like the video, if you found it helpful at all, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Take the time to comment, say hey, say I use that, say whatever. Maybe give some feedback on what the perfect light would be. The perfect light for me would be a spawn child between these two lights. It would have the momentary of this, and maybe it would be the same thing. You can press it down momentary for a little bit, and if you just tap it, it goes on. Surefire, do it. Do it to it. That would be great if you could do that. Maybe you're like, momentary is down, constant on is pushing forward, or something. Something. That would make the XC1 great. APLC. Some people prefer the looks. That's cool. Uh, I prefer the light output of the APLC. I like the color temperature. I like the hot spot. I like the increased candela. I like the ability to throw a little further. I like, obviously, like I mentioned a bunch, that you can constant on with one hand. Great. So, is either of these lights the perfect light? No, we're still not there yet, in my opinion. We still don't have the perfect light. But, Two great options for concealed carry, pros and cons to either. Hopefully I gave you enough insight to make the decision. If you already have an XC1, is it worth switching over to the APLC? Hmm, I don't know, maybe. If you already have the APLC, but some of the things I said I don't like about it are real deal breakers for you, so would you switch over to the XC1? Huh, maybe, I can't really tell you. But the other thing that I didn't mention that is important to some of you is cost difference. The APLC is about half the price of an XC1. APLC is running 120, 130-ish. The Surefire XC1 is over 200, 200 to 260, 270, I'm not even sure. So if price is an issue, or if you're gonna wanna outfit multiple of your guns or something, then obviously the half price of the APLC is something to take into consideration. So I filmed the review already, but there's been a lot of interest in the CZP-10C. So I actually, after filming, I uh, called a few local gun stores to see if any of them had it, and one of them had it, 5280 Armory. So I drove down the hill and bought this gun last night just to show you guys that it uh, fits the XC1 as well as the APLC. Haven't shot this gun yet, but I've heard a lot of things about it. There's been a lot of interest in it. The trigger is nice, the texture's nice, the serrations are nice. It is just barely bigger than a Glock 19, but man, this gun seems pretty sweet. So maybe I'll do a video on this gun at some point in the future. But really just wanted to buy it for a couple things to see if the light fits because the APLC does specifically say like for Glocks only, but it really fits a lot of guns other than Glocks, the P10C being one of them. And also I wanted to see if it was true about fitting Glock holsters. And it does 
fit this one anyway. Uh, this holster is specifically made for Glock mags though. So the CZ mags are a little bit loose in there. But the holsters itself, uh, they might fit your regular Glock holsters if you're wondering. All right guys, that concludes my review slash comparison of the APLC versus the XC1. And if you skip straight to the end of the video to find out what I carry, I am currently carrying the APLC. Not saying that won't change, but right now, weighing the pros and cons of both of these lights, the APLC just barely edges out the XC1. So take that for what it is. I'm not saying you need to carry what I carry. Again, if you can comfortably carry a X300 or a Streamlight TLR1, if you're gonna comfortably carry that and you're gonna carry it every day and it's not gonna be so big that you're like, well, maybe I'll just leave my gun home today. Those lights are better in every way except for size. So if you wanna carry one of those bigger lights, cool, go for it. If you're like me and comfort really is of more importance, especially appendix carrying, then you're gonna to wanna to choose one of these lights. All right, guys. As always, take care. Feel free to leave comments below, give feedback. If you have something that would make my reviews better, let me know. If you're gonna comment and say, that review was way too long, sorry, man. I, I, I give long reviews sometimes, and I think, I think if, it's, if, if, it's, it's, if it's a serious thing that you're seriously considering purchasing, that you're putting on a weapon that you're using for self-defense, you should have all the information that's out there. And so I just went ahead and provided all the information I can. All right, take care.